When Monica and Greg Tran expected their first child, Greg got busy planting organic, fresh-picked food. I think right before he was born, one of the first things I did was plant a, was make a raised bed somewhere. And yeah, and, and I remember Monica telling me that, that we should have been, you know, working on maybe putting the crib together or things like that. But, but I said, you know, it's, it's November. If I don't get the fall garden in now, you know, it's, it's not going to happen until next year. We never had any gardens like this. When we used to live in New York and when we were there, we had little pots and, and I tried very hard to, to grow veggies on, on the fire escape, but it, it didn't work so well. Yeah, it's, it's hard to get sunlight and, and it gets cold really fast. Raised in Houston and UT Austin grads, they returned to Texas and bought a rundown 1923 house in Clarksville. After fixing it up, they went after the yard. It was a big pile of dirt. There are weeds everywhere. Bermuda grass, which, which we still have some of. Tyler Porterfield from Articulated Design installed walk-around steel raised beds in the narrow side yard. I love being able to walk by and like pick a pepper or, you know, smell an herb or something like that. And then since we have the screen porch here that we spend a lot of time on, it's nice to be able to look out onto, you know, the fruit trees and the, and the garden and all that. We have some herbs, we have oregano, thyme, the lemon verbena is really nice. And then, and we have a bunch of different peppers. We've got some jalapenos, serranos, some, some cherry peppers. We have all our basils in there, the, the Italian basil and the Thai basil, and some, even some Chinese flowering chives. They're the best when they get a little bud on the end, and then, I don't know, we just cut them up and saute them with some eggs. They're, they're good. Greg added good soil and compost to nourish neglected ground. We have a green ever-bearing fig over there, and then we've got a peach behind us, and there's a there's an Asian pear tree. After a few growing seasons, one fall he seeded some beds with Elbin rye. The okra normally gives us just tons and tons of okra all summer long, and, and this summer we didn't get a lot of it. And when I pulled them for the fall, I, I noticed that we had the, the root nut nematodes. Supposedly the, the roots attract all the nematodes, and then when you, when you kind of till it under, it, it traps them in the roots and it would be good for kind of a green manure or winter cover crop anyways. On the other side of the yard, Greg's drawing self-watering planters. There's a reservoir at the bottom. It keeps the soil nice and moist, which is, which is good. It works really well in the winter too. You actually never have to water it. He grows lots of different peppers, still producing in 2015's mild winter. Fushimi pepper, it's, it's a Japanese pepper. It's a mild pepper, so we just, we'll just blacken it on a cast iron pan and just salt, salt it, and it's, it's great for a like a snack or an appetizer. The big bed, it's, it's mostly the, the brassicas. We have a ton of cauliflowers and broccoli and cabbage, Brussels sprouts. The broccoli, after you cut off the main, the main head, it, it just keeps sprouting those side shoots that you can keep cutting off and eating. We eat the leaves too, you know, just use them like any collard greens or any kind of greens. I will saute them or, you know, you can throw it in soup, like a chicken soup and just toss some leaves in there. We grow almost everything from seed except the broccolis we, we did from seedlings, but er, almost everything, all the, all the greens, I do broccoli rob, radishes, um, turnips, the bok choy, lettuce, spinach, al almost everything we do from seed. Once in a while, I'll use the John's recipe from, you know, it's like the fish emulsion and molasses mixture that they do. Um, we also, we make our own compost. We, we keep everything that we, you know, all our veggie scraps. I've got a big old pile back there and, and every fall I collect, you know, 20 bags of leaves and, and use it throughout the year. Basically every season before we plant new stuff, I'll, I'll mix the compost in. At the back of the garden, Tyler Porterfield built a trellis to gently screen the guest house from the main house. Young star Jasmine is still growing in. It gets those nice flowers and, and it's just a nice way to kind of screen it off without being like a, a fence. Since their property sits below a deep slope from the street, at this lowest point, they built drainage control. We have French drains all around it, so it pulls all the water around, and then, and then it'll kind of collect and drain out over there. The sea oats are pretty good in drought and flooding, so that's why we have those there. A steel bed at the back of the house is destined for pollinator plants, including edibles for them. Well, it's kind of high, so we needed to transition of it down to the ground. Their young son is already an old gardener. He helps me when I'm planting things. Well, I, I say it helps, but you know, he, he'll dig along and you know, he'll stick seeds in. Even when he was, 
probably six months old or, or eight months old, I would take him to the gardens and, and we'll, sm we'll smell the herbs. And it's funny because he doesn't know the difference between herbs and a normal plant, but now he just goes up to a plant and he'll rip a leaf off and smell it. We try to eat healthy. I try to grow a lot of varieties that you wouldn't be able to buy in a store and a lot of them that you wouldn't even get in a farmer's market. So it's, it, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's great being able to, to be figuring out your dinner and just go outside and see what's ready. You know, you, you can cut a veggie off and, and it's on your plate in an hour. And, and it's, just, it's just great, you know, for a growing family, you know. I like that our kid gets to eat healthy food that, that I grew.